Hi, hi, and welcome to Strap a Watch, Michael Knapp, Michael Knapp Leather. So, man, the most expensive alligator hide I had ever purchased, and it's the highest grade of quality of alligator hide I have ever purchased. And I want to thank the gentleman who ordered a strap out of this hide, Mr. Errol Severn out of New York City. Man, I'll tell you, I've been so excited about getting this cutting into this alligator hide and making a strap out of it. I actually bumped him up in the rotation because the guy that's ahead of him has an, a strap order of seven straps, seven straps, four for him, three for his sons for Christmas. And he's an old repeat customer. We go back a few years. Um, so I wanted to get to this and I, I said, man, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and start this, hammer it out and film it. Maybe the guy will let me do a show and say his name. And so I contacted Errol last night and asked for permission. I had started on the strap and started filming it even. And he said, oh yeah, no, you can even use my last name because it's spelled kind of funky. So I said, well, if you want me to use your last name, please let me know how you pronounce it because I have dyslexia for real. And, oh, I'm the worst speller. And that's the biggest complaint on the show. I've talked about it before. People always correcting me how I pronounce words. Come on, get a life. My gosh. I pronounce so many words wrong. You should see me spell. Thank God for spell checker these days. When I was in college, we didn't have any of that. But man, this turned out sweet. And it's for, backstory on the watch, it's a reference number 1601 Datejust, 36 millimeter Datejust, silver dial, uh, white, gold, and stainless combo, fluted bezel. And it came with a strap, a leather strap. And he liked the color of the strap. He just, you know, he didn't really like, I think, the style of strap, wanted an alligator strap. And so that's why he, when he contacted me, I kind of had to talk him into this, this strap, honestly. So we're going to go into the watch a little bit, the, the 1601 series. You're going to see me hand make this. And I uh, can't wait to show you the final product. Stick around after the intro. We'll get right into it. Thank you so much for joining me today on Strap a Watch. And here is this beautiful hide. Oh man, I, I, I don't even want to tell you guys how much this costs. Um, buku bucks, like I always say, buku bucks. So here once again is the, uh, the reference of uh, Errol's watch. Beautiful watch, by the way, with the pie pan dial, the 1601. That's really the giveaway. It, it resembles uh, pans that, you know, you make pies in. And that's why that dial is kind of on the outer edge. Uh, it domes down rather than and when you get into the later reference of the 16014. Uh, 16014, excuse me. Then it's, it's just a flat face. So you can absolutely tell the difference between the two just by looking at the dial. And what we're really referring to here, you know, is the white gold fluted bezel. Uh, this reference that, that Errol has has a silver dial, which is really cool because you can accent that with so many different straps, man, you know. Check this out. Isn't that cool after cutting the uppers? And, and you saw where I was cutting the... Uh, these uppers out, which is in that midsection, kind of near, uh, let's say the <laughs> the anus area. <laughs> um, it's it's got some of the coolest pattern on any alligator. It, it's one of the first cuts I do, and then that way too, I can get it cut in half and uh, store it easier. But the pattern is just really cool. It gives kind of a wavier pattern rather than kind of your more traditional straight scales, you know. But, uh, you know, 
Uh, that's what, what 99% of the straps, alligator straps you see, they're really, you know, very standard straight scales. This truly gives it a unique, <laughs> a unique flavor. So, really cool watch, man. You know, the one thing about this reference of the Datejust 1601 is it didn't have a quick uh, set date on it. So, you you know, you had to wind it all the way. If you had laid it down and the power reserve went out, you would have to really, you know, wind and wind and wind and wind past midnight, get to the next date, get to the next date until you were on, on date. And it wasn't until uh, later in the, in the later 70s when they came out with the, the actual quick date. But this probably has, um, I think it's the 1570. There's the 1570 and 1575. This is, you know, a uh, model from the serial numbers. We know the production run was in, in 1959. So it probably has the 1570 movement. Workhorse, you know, and again, no uh, no quick date. The thing about with Errol on this watch, and he, he just purchased this rather recently is that um, he was born in 1960 and the watch did not actually sell to the first owner until 1960. So both he and the watch have recently just turned 60 years old. And I think that was one of the reasons he pulled the trigger to buy the watch. And when he called, he first called me, um, you know, he was even contemplating giving this watch to his wife. He didn't know. Uh, he's kind of a bigger dude. He's got a pretty good sized wrist. And that was another reason he was contacting me was, you know, he, he's always had trouble getting fit with, with straps. That was, you know, the strap that was on this, this watch right now is just, it doesn't fit. So, um, you know, that's why he, he contacted me and I was, I, like I was saying, I almost had to talk him into this alligator because he was looking for something, I think, a little lighter, which I have, but uh, this was, you know, new, and I and I really talked it up about the quality, and um, like I said, I don't want to tell you how much. I'll, okay, I'll tell you. It was $1,500 for that hide. So now you know why... Alligator straps cost what they do, man. You know, the, oh, it's it's uh, un- unbelievable. I, I I think the highest I had ever paid earlier was nine hundred and fifty dollars. So I mean, going another five hundred fifty dollars for just one skin, ah, oh, man. And and actually, that was supposed to be a sale price. It was like eighteen hundred on sale for fifteen hundred, but. Um, you know, just a little bit, too, about uh, Datejust. I had done a history of the Datejust several months ago. I'll leave a link for that here. And something I've never really shared personally on Strap a Watch before. Uh, and just a little bit of my family background. My, my father's father, my granddad Nap, we called him. He was, a, after World War II... He was a buyer for, uh, first it was called Arbaugh's Department Store. And my great-grandfather was the president of Arbaugh's. My great-grandfather was a very wealthy man. And uh, so my granddad Knapp was a buyer. He was in charge of the jewelry. And then later it became, it was Knapp's Department Store. So here's actually Knapp's Department Store. The building, this is the flagship building. They had several locations all through Michigan. And I'm from Michigan. Um, it is in Lansing, Michigan, and this this store is actually it's not it's not a store anymore. But the building, the flagship store, the building is still there and and is used for apartments and some other retail shops down below and stuff like that. But um, pretty cool. Even when I was a kid, Knapp's department stores were still pretty big. Um, I think Hudson department stores bought them out, and then they got bought out. Hudson got bought out. But my granddad, Knapp, was in charge of the jewelry, and he was all over the world, you know, and he was the Rolex buyer uh, for our boss and Knapp's department stores. So my grandfather had a collection of Rolex watches, you want to believe. And when my dad graduated from veterinary school, my dad was a veterinarian. 
my, my granddad gave my father a gold Rolex presidential, all gold, and it was engraved on the back. And unfortunately, my grand, uh, my, my, my father was killed in a car accident. He was only 28 years old. He was almost 29. And I was uh, almost 10. I was nine years old. So, I mean, just it's a real, real tragedy, real shame. And the thing is, my dad had the watch on when he crashed, and it stopped. It broke the crystal, um, and it, it stopped, and it broke the watch. Uh, the day, the time he, he was killed on September 11th, 9-11, and uh, even the time. And I, I subsequently, that was in 1974, in 1977, I went out to California and I was visiting my, my grandparents in Palm Springs. They lived in Palm Springs at the time, my dad's dad and my mom. And my dad's dad gave me my dad's watch. Um, and, you know, I, I shared about this before with Ke about Kevin and we caught the guy that broke into the house. Well, the guy stole that watch of my father's. I never got it back. Um, it was in a bottom dresser drawer back in our old condo that we lived at, Linda and my wife and I. And when I came home, I didn't know what happened at first. And then that was one of the first telltale signs. I saw the drawer open and I went in and of course the box was gone and I was devastated. It was really the only thing I had left of my father's, um, you know, so it's a, it's a pretty sad deal. But, uh, also my my granddad's brother, my dad's uncle. So my great uncle, Robert Knapp, all right? We called him Uncle Bob. He was an actor in Hollywood. And uh, he was on all these shows, these famous TV shows, especially in the 50s and 60s, Gunsmoke, Bonanza. There was a show back then called the FBI, Perry Mason, Rat Patrol. Here's a picture of him in Rat Patrol. Mission Impossible, and he also was the star of a B Western called Gunman of Laredo. So it's a pretty cool family history. But here is the final product, you guys. Turned out gorgeous. This was such a fun build. I'm so glad it's done. And now I can get to those seven straps. Well, listen, thanks for joining me today. God bless you all. And until next time, keep on ticking. <laughs>